OpenOffice and LibreOffice are two really powerful office applications. With these apps you can do many things, from taxes and writing letters to more complex things like statistics and even database management. In this tutorial, however, we pick one specific task many students need to achieve, writing a thesis. Before this tutorial begins, I also want to say that we won't be talking about special things like how to edit formulas or how to make a table. We also won't talk about the most basic things like how to write and format text. This tutorial will show you how to get your scientific paper done quicker and better using formatting stars and automatically create a table of contents, cross-references for books, footnotes and images as well as handling your bibliography. The reasons for choosing an open source solution like OpenOffice or LibreOffice over Word and other tools is easy. For one, Word is an expensive tool, which has many many features a student doesn't ever need. Everything students need for their thesis is either built in or is available for free. Both tools are open, modifiable with extensions, have a huge library of pre-built templates and are cross-platform. But before we begin, this tutorial is brought to you by FreeMac Software and Mac OS X Screencasts. FreeMac Software is a website where you can find many other free and open source software, just like OpenOffice. If you want to take a look, go to free-mac-software.com. Enjoy the screencast! Let's start off by looking at the various text styles. Many users of these document writing apps aren't aware these exist, because if they would do, their documents would look much more consistent. It's a really handy feature, so handy and useful in fact, that every other word processing software has adopted it. You find a brief overview of some of the available text styles in this menu. Text that is in your current selection will get this style applied. You see, we can choose the most commonly used ones right here. Now, I got a very short document here. Yours is probably longer. To apply a text style, select some text and then go to the menu and click the corresponding entry. We see shortly why these are useful. For now, let me apply the different header styles to the headers. The other text also has a text style applied to it. By default, the style is text body. Now I want you to show why these text styles are so helpful. When I open the styles window, we see that there are in fact more than just paragraph styles. An entire page can have a specific style and a list can have a specific style as well. You can even go down to the character level and apply a style for only some characters. These character styles are useful if you have source code and other special text in a document. A character style can be applied to inline text as well as an entire paragraph. I think you get it by now what the other styles do. With page styles you can, for instance, make a special title page style which doesn't count towards the page count and doesn't have a header or footer row. What I'd rather want to show you is that you can customize these styles to your liking or university requirements. Let's take the headers as an example, because these always make a good example. If I put my cursor in one of the headers, you see that I can modify text styles and font just for this setting. What you also see is that the other headers are not updated with these changes. But we can make them change by telling the header style that these changes should now be default for other headers. All you have to do is select the changed header and then click Update Style. The only downside is that you need to do this once for every other text style you want to use. It's probably worth it though, since your professor or even your own taste of design will appreciate it. You can actually also change these styles right from the Styles pane. Depending on what you're after, this might be quicker. Right click a style and then modify it. Now, I can't go into detail with this, but there's one thing I want to point out here. From the Organizer tab, you see that a style inherits another. This means you can create new styles from scratch or base a style on an existing one. I'm going to come back to the styles in a later section of this tutorial. For now, let's move on to the next section. Creating a table of contents is really easy. But before we begin, let's move our text out of the way so that we actually have enough space for it. From the menu, I insert two page breaks. The reason I do that is one of these pages is going to be our title page. 
The other one is going to be our table of contents. Before I continue, this menu here has a style option. So when I choose to insert a page break, I can also set the style for this new page to, let's say, first page. The option below tells OpenOffice whether this page should count towards the total page count. In most European universities they shouldn't, so I leave this off. Now that we have created a title page so easily, let's also create a table of contents. This time we simply tell the break to apply the page style index. But we also want to change the page number to 1. To actually insert our table of contents now finally, all we have to do is select that page and then insert an index table from the insert menu. In this new menu we have, again, a couple of options, which I won't go into detail, but with this feature you can insert many different indexes like use bibliography or an illustration index. We come to that in one of the following sections. But we leave this option here at table of contents and click OK. This table updates itself automatically whenever a new section has the text style heading applied to it. At the moment this doesn't look right. Usually I want to have a number in front of either section. If you look at the actual headers in the text, you also see that currently there is no outline numbering. Let's fix that. We select outline numbering from the tools menu. Here in this menu we can set the appearance for the basic header styles either separately or for all at once. For number, I want to use actual romantic numbers. The preview on the right updates immediately. This looks right. So let's accept the changes by clicking OK. The table doesn't update right away. So let's right click it and select update. You can also modify its look from this menu, by the way. Well, this looks almost right now. I think we need to make one more change though. In the outline numbering options, simply type space and the various headers shift to the right. Now let's have a look if this solved the problem. Seems to have fixed it. So let us create a title page in the next section. Title pages require only minimal text and formatting. Paragraph styles will help us here again to achieve a common look for the entire document. First, let me write some text on the title page to get started. Insert the document's title by going to the Insert menu. This also allows you to insert many other variable texts defined in the document. To define these variables, go to the File Properties menu. You can also manually insert them by the way, but if you use these variable texts, they are updated automatically wherever they appear in the document when you change them in the properties. Just like the paragraph styles. Keep that in mind if you're working on a document. It's really neat OpenOffice is able to do this stuff without your attention. My title page now has a title with a subtitle and a table containing some general information about the document like module number, submission date, and work count. To format the title and subtitle, you can simply use the title and subtitle paragraph styles. Again, modify these to your liking. The table looks a bit crammed underneath the title. Let's fix that by using a frame. You can add a new frame from the insert menu. In the appearing menu, we can position the frame to be anchored to the page vertically on the bottom and it should be using 100% of the page's width. Now we have a new empty frame at the bottom of our page. We select the old table, copy it to the clipboard and paste it down below. And finally we can delete the old table and we now have a finished title page. Handling bibliography is also not a problem for OpenOffice. The suite has a built-in bibliography tool that you can access via the Tools menu. When you start the bibliography database for the first time, like in my case, the database is pre-populated with some default books. You can delete these, but I'll explain how the database works by using them as example. The different text fields below allow you to enter the information for your specific material. This can be anything you want to reference in the thesis. If it's not a book or in the list, you can simply use miscellaneous. 
I won't explain how the various fields work. This should be self-explanatory once you're adding your own bibliography. However, the short name is special. This is a unique identifier you can set to reference this specific book. The key is definable by you. To make it easier for you to guess the reference, you might want to come up with a slightly longer short name. For instance, use the main author's last name plus the publication year. When you're done adding bibliography, you can reference them from the text like this. First, let me close the database. We don't need to have this open. From the insert menu, select bibliography entry. This opens a new window where you can choose a book from your bibliography. The menu gives you a list containing the short names set earlier. This is why I said it is helpful to have a more self-speaking scheme since you can't tell exactly which book is which. Click insert and the reference will be inserted and the cursor position. Now that we have that, let's set up a bibliography index at the end of our document. It is recommended to use the heading stars 9 and 10 for appendixes and subappendixes. You know already how to customize the look of the numbering, so I'm not going to explain this again. To insert the bibliography, simply open the insert, index and table menu again. This time though, choose bibliography as type and click OK when done. Again, this looks almost right, but in most cases you probably don't want to use your citation key to reference the books in the appendix. To fix that, edit the bibliography and enable number entries. Two things happen now. First, the citation key disappeared from the text and changed to a number. Secondly, the bibliography now is also missing a citation key. If you can further change the appearance and contents of this table by going to the edit menu. Cross-referencing is the last thing we are going to take a look at today. First, I want to bring in one more element though. From the insert menu, I select to add a picture. To adjust the look of this image, you can right-click it and choose Picture. To actually change the caption, however, you need to click on Caption. This menu now asks you for a caption text and the category. In my case, this is an illustration. The nice thing is that even if you add more image to the document, you don't need to worry about numbering. This is done by OpenOffice for you. As well as using text stars and an automatic table of contents, this is all about fail-proofing your document. Now, to actually reference a picture or a section from a text, first go to the position where you want to insert the reference, then select cross-reference from the insert menu. This allows you to reference everything in your document, from illustrations to tables and even sections. Simply select Insert to insert the reference number of this image. When I add a new picture now, before the one we already have in our document, the numbering changes below every image in a document. And the reference number changes as well. If it didn't and you want to force an update, you can always do that from the Tools menu. Remember that you have different citation options in the Cross References menu. Play about with these to get the referencing right for your document. As you've just seen, it's really easy to get up and running with OpenOffice and LibreOffice quickly to write a paper. Once you've got everything set up, it's mostly just about writing the text, which is agreeably difficult enough. If you are still frustrated with these tools, you might want to consider LaTeX as an alternative. In about one or two months from now, we're going to have the LaTeX tutorial, which is currently only available in German, translated to English. If you want to be notified as soon as it's out, please write me a message to this address here. Thanks for watching.